Hello, my name is Pablo Romero Fresco. I work at the University of Vigo in Spain, where I lead the research group GALMA and where I conduct research on media accessibility. In the second video lecture for module 2A on intralingual re-speaking, we'll cover speech recognition, uh, how it works, how it can be used for re-speaking, and also dictation. Because before we look into re-speaking, that is, into listening and re-speaking at the same time, we need to learn how to dictate to speech recognition software in order to obtain good recognition. Speech recognition um, engines are normally made up of an acoustic model, first of all, with, uh, then a vocabulary or a lexicon, and a language model. The acoustic model is a collection of speech data located in the speech engine and including, first of all, a large amount of audio material, uh, its exact proofread and corrected transcription, and finally, the digital representation of that audio material in the way of waveforms or individual sounds. In other words, what this audio material looks like mathematically. When a sentence like, I speak to my, or uh, say, I speak to my mum, for example, is recognized, the analog, analog signal is digitized, um, and the acoustic model of the speech recognition software turns this into phonemes. Then it checks this against the lexicon or the vocabulary, um, and the acoustic model yields different words in its confidence score. It could be I, as in our eyes, it could be the pronoun I, it could be it could be a combination of sounds like I speak or I peaked, etc. Uh, this is however still not accurate enough, uh, which is why speech recognition software also uses a language model. Now a language model is a corpus of texts that the speech engine can choose so as to recognize the speaker's utterance. The list of words included in, in language model, or this list of words, is uh, specified in advance by the software developers. If the speaker's utterance is not on the list of words, then it will not be recognized by the software, or rather, it will be misrecognized. That is, it will result in an error. In this case, the language model will understand that, for example, here in this example, I speak to my is not really an option, it's not likely to be in the corpus, whereas I speak to my then is a probability, is um, a likely out outcome that that could be uh, of, of high confidence because it will be included in the corpus. Now um, as far as general knowledge of speech recognition is concerned there's also something else. Um, speech recognition works on the basis of confidence and probabilities, as we said. How confident is the software that the user has said a certain utterance? How likely is a given word to occur after and before the previous and the next word? For the following examples, many speech recognition applications will be able to assess how likely the word in bold is to occur before and after the previous and the next four words. This, that is the need to perform these calculations, is the reason why some speech recognition applications take a few seconds to show words on screen once you have dictated them. And this is also the reason why, in order to obtain good recognition, it makes sense to dictate longer phrases rather than single words, which include no context. Um, because if you dictate single words, then apart from not included context, then you're not really helping the language model at all. So the longer the units that you dictate, the more likely they are to be recognized accurately. Following this, it makes sense to dictate in idea units and to keep those idea units together. If the speaker that you're re-speaking says, see for example the advantages, verbatim re-speaking will make it very difficult for the software to obtain good recognition because we would be breaking the connection between C and the advantages. Now, the software only has the word C isolated by a comma, 
which means that it has no contextual information to decide between the letter C, the C as in the ocean, and the verb to see. If instead of re-speaking this verbatim, we opt for something like, for example, see the advantages of, then the connection between C and the advantages is reinforced. And thus the software knows that this is the right choice. So as a tip, um, we would say that it's important to keep phrases together whenever possible. Now, here are a few tips on how to set up a voice profile. First, the microphone, which is an essential element that is sometimes overlooked um, and is very important to obtain accurate recognition. It's always worth checking what microphones have been approved by speech recognition companies, such as Nuance, for example, the developers of Dragon, which at the moment um, are, are have a list of of different uh, company approved microphones so that's always very important um, the microphone in this case headsets if that's what's going to be used they must be adjusted comfortably and those headsets um, must be in a stable position at either side of your mouth at the distance of say two centimeters so around here okay now, depending on the speech recognition software that you're using, it may or may not be necessary to perform some initial training to get the software used to your voice. If this is necessary, try to read the text as you plan to dictate, uh, including if possible punctuation marks. Um, and should you be able to perform further training, try to read texts that are related to the type of content that you're likely to be re-speaking in the future because this way the software becomes familiarized with the relevant vocabulary. Now, when you start dictating, try to use a steady pace, um, try to utter short and concise sentences and to enunciate punctuation. Depending on the software, um, you may need to briefly pause for the text to be released on screen. For instance, uh, what we say here is each time you dictate full stops, that's an idea. Again, you should speak clearly. Um, there's no need to raise, uh, to raise or to lower your voice, um, not necessarily. Ideally, you like to speak slightly robotically so that you can facilitate the software's recognition, but not completely like a robot. Um, and then if the software misrecognizes a word, uh, you don't have to continue dictating the, the word in the same way. Actually, that would probably lead to further misrecognitions. Now, um, what it's important or crucial actually to remember is that the software is part of your team. There's no point in challenging the software to see what can be and what cannot be recognized. Instead, what you need to do is to look for ways uh, to optimize its performance, to make it work properly, and remember to turn off the microphone when you're not dictating. Otherwise, any comment that you make will be picked up by the software and then it, this can have a negative impact on your on your voice profile. And well, the final slides of this presentation compare three ways of going about pace, pauses, pronunciation and dictation units when you speak into speech recognition software. The natural, the one in the middle, the natural non-spontaneous way is the one that we need for accurate recognition. So that's the one to look at um, when producing live subtitles. Um, so the pace should be steady. That means neither slow nor fast or uneven. The pauses should be as per common sense and as per punctuation marks. So neither after every word nor as it springs to mind. Now, Pronunciation should be clear, although not exaggerated, for every word, but uh, neither overemphasized nor clipped, slurred or mumbled. And finally, dictation units should be logical phrases um, or re-speaking units that have been thought in advance. That's important because if they are thought in advance, that means that you know what you're going to say and that makes a huge difference for the software. It really helps recognition. Um, 
what you don't have to do with your dictation units is to go for individual words, for fillers, colloquial uh, contractions or slips of the tongue. Now, as was the case in Unit 1, this unit includes uh, some extra resources that are very important to acquire the skills that are needed for, for dictation. You have material by uh, Chris Ailes, the real-time voice writing trainer in the US. You have material on punctuation in re-speaking. Uh, you have specific material for those of you who are using Dragon. Documents, videos, tutorials, um, examples of students dictating to Dragon, and then the assessment and comments on those exercises. And you have um, material about re-speaking with Google speech recognition with this application called Web Captioner. And again, an example of a student dictating to this software and the assessment of that work. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, you have obviously further material both in this unit and in the remaining units of this module 2A on intralingual re-speaking. Thank you very much for your attention.